sure. Get away from there. There's nothing back there. Look good. You know, just put this right here is good. Mark the box out. Tell you what, when you're cutting holes in drywall, one, one of the things that you learn pretty quickly is never cut behind drywall unless you know for sure what's behind it. Uh, if you don't know what's behind it, uh, I definitely would not use uh, power tools like a sawzall or a jigsaw um, because in uh, my six years of doing uh, home remodeling, I I think uh, I didn't abide by that rule, and I think three times it caught me, and I ended up cutting something behind the drywall. Um, one of the things where I, I didn't realize I, I could I would have sworn that there wasn't anything behind there, and <clears throat> I was wrong. There was. Um, all right, so this junction box. Uh, one of the tips that I found um, that's helpful is sometimes the threads. Um, that go into this plastic tab uh, are kind of cross-threaded or they've never really gone all the way through. And uh, what I like to do is, is do a test run and make sure that these work and tighten all the way up and all the way back because if uh, sometimes when you stick this in the wall and you go to do that and it binds up, you end up stripping things out. At least here you can see what's going on um, before it's hidden in the wall. So basically I just like to... And it's usually actually kind of tough that, that first and this is a, this is actually a great example is so it's bound up so this would have been behind the drywall and it's not tightening up I'm trying to get in here and, and you don't want this to be going on while you're while it's in the wall so you want to try and battle this You should be able to bend that forward and back before you put it in the wall. Um, so that was that was a great example because you saw how that kind of bound up on me, and you just don't want that happening while you're trying to put it in the wall. The drywall already, you know, be, and that's the bad thing with cutting it by hand is that big uh, hand saw, <coughs> uh, drywall knife, um, is it, it kind of. Um, pushes uh, blows out the back of the drywall um, so that when you put these tabs in sometimes you don't have a good bite for these tabs to to uh, grab a hold of so doing this uh, helps put less stress on it so we'll do the same one on the other side Run it back running good so we're good to go uh, the next step is I have a wire coming down from the top and a wire going down from the bottom. So I just want to uh, <coughs> open up this tab. I just do that by pushing in it. It has a little plastic seal on it. You just pop it in. And this basically acts as a one way because <coughs> when you put your wire down in there, pulling it back out, um, it doesn't, uh, it, it helps keep it from pulling out of this box. Do the same thing for the bottom one so we're good like that got a hole we're ready to go so what we want to do is grab our wire 
I want to keep that insulation intact. The wire up through here, like so. Um, and do the same thing for the wire up from the bottom. I personally like to leave the wires long until I get it run through the box um, just to make sure that your the wires are, are long enough um, so this wire is actually is coming down from the top uh, I want to just make sure I that insulation is tucked in there nicely and this wire does come down to the top of the box all right now I'll fish this in um, and I'm sure if you talk to a actual electrician they'll tell you that you should cut these before because I believe you're not supposed to have a whole lot of Romex inside this box I think like I said before you should have about a half an inch of Romex sticking out on the inside of this box. Which I think I can still do. Where's my um, and because this is a remodel, um, I think within six inches of the junction box, this Romex should be stapled to the uh, two by four inside the wall. But because it's a remodel, you don't have that luxury of getting in there and doing that. So I think this is an exception of uh, where you don't have to secure the Romex um, behind the wall. So basically, just cut this. Give me a little bit of extra so I can come in and strip it. Be about six inches of wire in here. These are my stripping tools. Gotta be careful not to blow the drywall out. The older the uh, the Romex, the harder it is to strip. Um, these wire strippers are, are pretty good because they have a section that even if you press too hard, it won't cut through the wires. But you still have to be careful of twisting it because you'll end up nicking the uh, the sleeve uh, coating over the black and white wire. How much you don't want to do because then you expose the copper um, so you need to be real careful about doing that um, take away the paper that's on the ground Don't work on electrical boxes where there are like 12 Romex wires running up into it. Talk about a pain in the ass trying to get it all fed up through. This is an extra deep box, and the only reason. I'm using an extra deep box because it's all that I currently had with me. I'm trying to save money. Um, I'm not going to the store. Square, 
And this is where we come in where, because the drywall is sensitive around these areas, the fact that I've tested these, you don't want to tighten them too tight. You can tell as soon as they start to grip. And it's locked into place. So this wire is good. Romex is coming inside the box about a half an inch this side. Uh, not so good. I got a lot of excess wire running in. Um, I know in the past, sometimes, not saying it's right, um, but when I have had extra Romex in here, I would write with a Sharpie of where this wire came from. Um, you know, I would write uh, from an, an underground um, the, or that this is the, uh, well, this one is actually feed wire, but this one then runs over to, uh, the plug that's up there. Um, so I, I don't think, I think I'm going to do that here. Well, I think I'm going to leave this excess wiring in here. Once again, this is just a, uh, a junction box. So I'm going to end up stuffing all these wires in here and just putting a plate over it. So, get these ready to go. Alright, here it is all uh, tucked in there. Not the prettiest uh, junction box ever, but. Uh, ground wire stuffed in the back double check to make sure that the that bare copper which is the ground isn't uh, touching uh, well it can touch the wires but the um, well basically you want to make sure that the hot and the common wire um, isn't uh, sticking out of the uh, um, wire nuts um, so that they can come in contact with that copper I just want to make sure that you know everything's nice and tight and not going to move around um, and we should be good, good to go. One thing that I do on these is I don't put the cover plates on until after I've tested it because for me it seems like uh, Murphy's, Murphy's Law. If you go and put all your cover plates on and you go flip the breaker, something's not going to work and you're going to have to dive back in. <coughs> Excuse me. You're going to have to dive back in and check, uh, check certain wiring, especially if it's a complicated wiring. Uh, where you have a you know a light switch, a three-way switch, or something like that, where you gotta go back and troubleshoot. So uh, I I recommend uh, making sure you go in and uh, double turn the turn it on, make sure everything works before you put the plates on. Um, just uh, just what I do. Uh, so anyway, uh, that is done. Um, so really, um, with the exception of uh, me taking the uh, the plug out from up here, um, we if I were to trip the breaker uh, uh, back on um, I should have power to uh, to this um, and uh, the wiring from here um, then goes up to here where it then feeds everything else in the uh, in the um, uh, tool shed here so uh, that's my that's my next step uh, I'll test all the wiring uh, and turn the breaker on before I start patching uh, all this drywall um, so that's uh, that's the next step uh, down here. Uh, the one thing I am going to do is there's a, a hole that's down in there. Um, and if you can see it right there, um, that's where the mice are trying to find their way back up through here. So what I'm going to do is take a piece of steel wool and stuff all around that, that hole because the, the mice uh, and rats don't really like to chew through steel wool. Um, so I'm going to do that. That'll discourage them from... Uh, wanted to come back up through that hole and making it wider and of course they're going to try and chew the uh, the um, plastic uh, before they chew the wood because it just is softer um, so anyway uh, I'm going to stick some steel wool down in there and then uh, uh, once I test everything uh, we'll be good to go hey that's my glove give me that let go let go so <laughs> yeah, you know, rule number one when doing electrical work, when you take a uh, plug out or light switch out, you should always mark what wires go where. 
because it <laughs> just makes things so much easier. Fortunately for me, there was no uh, um, a, a lighting switch or three-way switch or anything going on in here. So this is, uh, even though it may look complicated, it's really straightforward. Um, it, this was just a plug. Uh, the black wires are, are hot um, and they go to one side of the plug. The common wires um, are the white wires and they go to the other. So basically, <laughs> if I just wanted to continue to feed, because probably what happens here at this point in this junction, because it's a junction box and, and plus it was a plug. Um, so probably one wire goes up to the lights and the light switch and the other wire goes and feeds uh, the wall plugs um, that are uh, around the tool shed. Um, that's my guess. I, I don't really know. It's hard to tell what they did on this 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 little building, but that's my guess. So, <clears throat> what I want to do here is uh, because I have a cabinet and the cabinet actually sits um, way up high, um, uh, I really want electrical plug on this little wall over here because it's really convenient. So, um, since my wires from here seem to be coming up uh, and coming down into this, I'm actually going to cut a new hole up higher and put a uh, double uh, box uh, up here higher so I'm gonna have four uh, outlets uh, onto this area of course I say I'm gonna have four outlets on it I was just uh, telling you about uh, making sure that you don't uh, over uh, overload your uh, your amperage uh, on a 20 amp circuit but um, usually probably what I'll put on here is things that I set on the cabinet like battery chargers um, or a radio or something like that so they don't pull a whole lot of amps so um, it's always nice to have some extra plugs if I had my way on all my outlets in my house they would all be double boxes so I would have uh, four plugs to be able to plug things into um, so anyway that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna cut, put a mark up here put the box in and move all these wires up so that uh, I can do that and then uh, I should be ready to trip the breaker on all right. So my cabinet is 52 inches. It's up about to there. I'm gonna want my plate overhangs that. So I'm gonna put my box. I got a stud right here, so I got to be on this side of the stud. I'm gonna put the bottom of my box should be right about there. The camera is moving around a lot. The, it's sitting on a board, and the I'm standing on the board. So, put the box over here. Make sure I clear the two by four. Mark that. I know there's some wire that's running up through this, um, so I just have to be careful when I'm cutting with my saw up through that so that I, um, if I do hit the wire, um, I'm not just diving into it and uh, cutting it. So, all right, all the wiring up to our new location. Sorry that the camera keeps shaking. Um, next. Let's see. This one's coming up from the bottom. This one's coming up from the bottom. And this one's coming up from the bottom. Oh, interesting. I can feel, run my finger along this Romex. And I just noticed right here, uh, the plastic coating on the Romex is chewed off right here. But if I reach further in, right where there's a hole, There's a, a larger chunk of Romex uh, with the uh, 
insulation chewed off. Shit. Which is right down in this corner. And I believe this wire runs down, goes through the corner and goes that way and feeds the uh, electrical plugs on the wall. So the million dollar question, do I leave it? Really, I'd like to, <laughs> if I get rid of the uh, the rats and I won't have to worry about this, um, especially so the rats or mice or whatever are getting into the walls here. Um, you know, I'm gonna run my camera my camera in there and see how bad that is down in there further because uh, I, I can feel it but I can't really tell if it's just the outer layer of the uh, plastic that's chewed off and the actual wire insulation isn't chewed off I'll leave it but if I see bare wires on the uh, on the hot um, I have to open up the drywall and dive in further what I'm really afraid of is I can sometimes I can hear the rats in the in the uh, rafters up here in this corner. Uh, wow, ongoing issue. So, all right, I'm gonna get my camera ready and uh, put that in there and see what I can see. So I'm gonna run this camera down into the hole um, along this uh, Romex and see how bad the rats have chewed the uh, the Romex off. Um, so. I'll stick it down through there. And there you can see. I'm not sure if you can pick up from. We have to put the macro on there. There's a good shot. Yeah, that is good. Of the Romex. It looks like they just chewed off the insulation around the top and they haven't chewed the. Um, the black or the white wire in there. Let me try and get it to a spot and then point. So right here, this is all white, but this area here that's that's taken out is where the rats had chewed it. So I think I'm gonna leave it for now, um, but if I have any more uh, problems, um, this will be the first place I come to is taking out this corner and uh, redoing this. So, taking out what corner? The, flag? The, the, the drywall? The drywall, yeah. So, there we go. So I have the uh, the upper wall plate in. I moved it from here um, up to here. All the wiring. Uh, I have a double uh, a double uh, plate um, outlets up here, so uh, that will be helpful when I push my cabinet in. Uh, plenty of places to plug things in at. I have this area, the junk, new junction box, put it over here. I just need a case for it, um, and I just need to seal up that with um, some steel wool and we'll be good to go there so the next step is is to go turn the power on and see if the lights come on so I'm gonna run into the house and uh, leave this running right here and we'll see if the power comes on
All right, so, <laughs> you know, I talked about don't put the cover plates on until you've tested it. Well, I think another good, uh, a good lesson or advice is don't screw your um, outlets uh, into the junction boxes until you've tested it because uh, I had a prime example of um, I did something wrong and it didn't didn't work. Uh, basically what I what I did wrong is the common that's coming into here uh, I didn't mark which was my main power coming in so when I wire netted a bunch of uh, the commons and hots um, together respectively um, they didn't uh, they didn't grab the hot and the hot was off by itself on its own um, its own plug and it didn't share any power with the others so it was it was kind of separated uh, anyway basically uh, I screwed up the wiring I had to go back and check and see what I did wrong um, it was a obvious mistake um, and uh, <laughs> kind of hard to explain so anyway uh, I double checked everything I found I found an error and um, so now before I screw those in, I'm gonna go try this again. Try turning the breakers on. So set you up here and on the run of the house and hopefully lights will pop on. There we go. So that was the uh, that was the error. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and turn the breaker off because as you're um, tightening these things down, because of that, the hot wires that are back in there. Um, actually, you can just see the there's a hot wire right there. If that bare copper wire comes in contact with the uh, common wires there, or the hots on the other side, um, it could uh, it could um, um, spark over and uh, blow the breaker again. So uh, we turn the breaker off, screw these back into place, and then we're good to go, and we can seal up the drywall. <laughs> 